Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Java for Beginners. This is video number two, and in video number one, we downloaded and installed IntelliJ, which is an integrated development environment, IDE. Uh, what that pretty much means is it's just a really nice, fancy text editor that allows you to write and execute Java applications. We used the menu within IntelliJ to download a JDK. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. What Java Development Kit does, among many things, it allows you to compile and execute your source code, your Java source code. What we've written in the last video, a very minimal Java application that just prints um, hello or hello world. Um, so we use the play button in the IDE in IntelliJ that pretty much invoked the JDK's ability to compile and execute a Java application. So in this video, we're going to talk a bit more and explain what we've done in the last video and make sense of it. So we're back in the IDE and we're looking at the source code for the program that we've written in the last video. If you remember, we said the .idea and the hello world.iml are files created automatically and managed by IntelliJ, so we're not going to worry about them for now. All you have to worry about is what's inside source folder, which is the class that we've created, the source file that we've created, the hello world.java. Now the .java part is the file extension. So it basically tells the operating system that this is the Java source file. That's it. Um, when we hit the play button here, notice what will happen here. It's created a new folder, and in that new folder, now never mind what production means here, you have the project name here, and then you have this file. So what is this file? Let's have a look actually in um, Finder, which is, if you're not familiar in macOS, the file browser, the operating system uh, default file browser. Um, we have a hello world.class, which is different to hello world.java. Now, how different? This is a byte file or bytecode file. What that means is it's compiled so that the Java interpreter could understand it. Now, remember we talked about the JDK, which is the Java Development Kit, which is a set of tools that allow you to develop Java applications. Now, Notice here that um, it is referencing the JDK here. So this is the location of the JDK on the disk. Let's go have a look. Uh, um, all right, so this is the set of executables, the set of tools that, Java, that the JDK offers. And what we're interested in are those two particular executables or tools, the Java C, which is the Java compiler, and then the Java, which is the Java interpreter. All right. So what IDE did is it used the Java C to produce this file. If you look at this file, it looks like this. Um, you can read the words. So you have hello world.java, you have your uh, print line and you have your Java IO print stream. Now what that means is it's quite advanced, but if, if you hold down command and click, or if you're on Windows, probably control and you click left click on the function print line, it'll take you to the location where it's defined, which is the print stream .java, which is part of the standard, um, Java library. It doesn't matter what that is for now. Uh, so I just want you to see the connection between the two files. Now, they are not exactly the same file, but this file is, is understood by this program, which is the Java interpreter. So you can't pass the source code directly to the Java interpreter. You have to pass it through the Java compiler, change it into a form that the Java interpreter could understand, and then the Java interpreter will take it from there and execute it 
as you can see, it's referencing the, the file that I was showing you here, the Java interpreter. This is the path to it. And it is referencing it here. Now, never mind what this actually, let's copy that. If you paste in what IntelliJ has generated for us, and if you take out the middle parts, Java agent, not really necessary. Um, class path, you can keep it this way, class path. And these are all absolute um, addresses. So um, not now. If you paste that in, you will see our hello world being printed. So what the IDE is doing is it's saving us, sorry, it's saving us from doing all of that through the command line. It's just providing a nice interactive graphical user interface uh, to achieve the same thing. So when you hit the play button, your .java file gets transformed into .class file using a tool called Java C. And then that class file gets interpreted, gets executed using a tool called Java. And then you see hello world being printed. All right, so let's repeat the process, but without using an IJE and see the difference between the two methods. So I'm going to copy the program that we've written and I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to bring up my finder, the little folder set up here, and I'm going to open my plain text text editor. I'm going to paste in our program that we've written, and I'm going to save it in the Java folder that we created. And rather than untitled.txt, if you go back to IntelliJ, you see that the file was named hello world.java. I mean, you can't really see it here, but um, again, if you open that in Finder and you look at the, the, the file extension, it's .java. So we could just copy that same name and we paste, we hit save. Notice now how the syntax is being highlighted just because we added the file extension. So prior to the file extension, the operating system, the programs wouldn't be able to tell what is your intention with this file. We're telling cut editor, which is my plain text editor, that this is a Java file. So it could make assumptions about the content of the file. And then it starts highlighting the text, as you can see here. Now we have this file here now, and the way to compile it, I'm in my terminal here. I'm going to write Java C and I'm going to see, I just type the first letter of the file and then I hit tab and it completed the rest of it for me. And once you do that, you can immediately see the new file that's been created. Hello world.class, which is sitting right next to hello world.java that we just compiled. Now, if you recall from earlier in this video, this is the same file that was generated and put in the out folder by IntelliJ when we hit that play button. And now I go back to the terminal and I go Java. And then notice I don't put any extension there. I'm just typing the class name. So if you go back to IntelliJ and you read the class name, this is what you're typing. So whatever is in here, you want to type in there. Now, what does a class mean? It doesn't matter for now. And then when you hit enter, it says hello world. Now, let me actually just get rid of IntelliJ and open this again with Cot Editor. And I'm going to change this to hello world two and save it. Now, what will happen if I redo the last command? If you run it again, it's not going to pick up the change that we made just because we haven't compiled it again to be picked up. So you see, so the change we made is here, but this file was only generated when the 
text that was being printed was hello world. So it was not updated to reflect the change that we made here. So what we need to do is to recompile again and we'll see the change in effect. That's it for this video. The point was to understand what's going on under the hood when using the IDE. Hopefully now you have a clear picture. Notice that we haven't spoken about the program itself. We haven't, we haven't discussed it. We haven't explained the keywords in it. Don't worry, that's going to be for the next video. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by using the like button. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.